In the last video, we talked about the free rider problem in public goods provision. And we looked at a simple example of a binary public good. So the public good can either be produced or it is not produced. And it, in that case, it was produced if at least one person contributes. And, but in reality, you very often have public goods that are in their provision continuous. You know, think about police or think about a fire brigade. Um, that is typically a, a public good that is, um, that, that is continuous. So we're not debating, hopefully, whether we're going to have a police or not. But it's more the, the question is how, how much police presence is there or if you consider the public good to be safety, then well, how safe do we want the place to be? And how much are we willing to contribute to that? And so uh, if we want to study that, we will also look at the concept of a Nash equilibrium, but we do this in a slightly different way because the public good, the contributions to the public good and also the provision are no longer a zero one decisions, uh, a zero one decision, but it, the decision is more how much people actually contribute to the public good, which then determines how much is provided. And so for that, we have to introduce a little bit of notation. So we have two people here, A and B. Each of them spreads their income they have on, they, they can either pu purchase a private good or a public good or a little bit of both. So uh, Q would be their contribution to the public good. However, what they consume is actually in terms of the well the in terms of the private good they just consume whatever they purchase in terms of the public good because both agents contribute the the total consumption of the public good for each person is the sum of those contributions and what we're going to look at now uh, in the next couple of slides is the so-called reaction functions. So the idea here is to say, well, what is the reaction of person A conditional on person B's contribution? So if, if person A knows that person B is going to contribute a certain amount, what is the optimal amount individually for person A to contribute? Hmm? Um, and so let's first, before we do that, we have to first think about well, what, what is person's, that, that person's demand for the public good. Um, and that simply comes from, uh, by, by taking this, uh, th this equation here, which is that the total uh, contribution to the public good. Um, and we, what we're going to do is we're going to take the budget constraint here and plug it into this equation. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we solve here for, uh, for Q. Okay, so we have the budget constraint, which is the price of the public good times the contribution of that person uh, to the public good, plus we assume that the price for the private good is 1. So, so it's just a quantity. I'm leaving out the subscript here for better readability. Right? And it's not hard here to solve for Q. Um, we simply have to subtract X and divide by P. So we have Y over P minus X over P. And this is exactly what you see down here. Okay, so, so uh, clearly, what what this will lead to is that the uh, the contribution of uh, of person A to the public good will depend also on how much the the other person is is contributing to that public good. So what we're ultimately looking at is again each player's best response to the contribution of the other player, and. These best responses are described by so-called reaction functions. So 
the way these reaction functions work is, well, the higher the, the contribution of one player, the lower is the optimal contribution of the other player. And that, that, should, be, that should be intuitive because um, for a given, if, if I want a given level of the public good, if, my, if the other person um, decides to pay more, for that given level, I need to pay less and I can simply enjoy the public good and, and then spend the rest of the money uh, for the private good. So I can raise my, my consumption. On the other hand, um, it might actually be optimal if the other person decreases their, uh, their, um, uh, their contribution, that my own um, contribution increases um, because I want to have the public good at a certain level. Okay? And, and so, 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 so it might actually be, uh, from, from an individual perspective, it might actually sometimes be optimal to increase one's contribution. So the contribution need not necessarily be zero for, for, for either of them because they also enjoy the public good and, and benefit from it. Okay, so... Um, here are the reaction functions graphed. Um, so this is the uh, the reaction function. The, the blue line is the reaction function for player A or for person A. So so the relevant axis is actually the horizontal one. Okay. So it tells us, for example, that if player B chooses a contribution level here player A's contribution level is a very low one, is here. Whereas if player B chooses very little, it is actually optimal for player A to choose a little bit, to choose a good bit more. Why? Well, that comes from the, the utility maximization. Um, we have not uh, yet worked through an actual example that, that that you know through a functional form for those reaction functions that 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 yield those curves then um, but either in this video or um, at the latest in the lecture I will give you uh, an, an example to, to make this clear okay but what, but what you have to realize is that there there is a negative relationship in the best responses so the more my the other player contributes, the less I should contribute and vice versa. Um, now the black line here is the exact same, is also a reaction function, but this time for player B. Okay, so what that tells me is that let's say if player A chooses a very high level, a, le a very high level of contribution, the optimal action for player B is to choose a low level. Conversely, if player A chooses a low level of contribution, the level of contribution for player B is actually high. Now, let's see how those two player strategies interact when there is you know, when, when they both are on their optimal reaction functions okay so, so their reaction functions one again, once again are from the perspective of each player the optimal action if the other player plays a certain strategy so again contributes little contributes more what is the optimal response to that? Now, obviously those two players would play this simultaneously. So basically each of them solves hypothetically, if player A does that, I do that. If player A does something else, I do something else. Okay, and so we, we then look at the optimal paths or the optimal responses for, for each player simultaneously. That's what we do in the analysis of a Nash equilibrium. And Nash won the Nobel Prize for showing that if you have a large number of these, uh, even if you have a large number of players 
who all decide simultaneously that it's possible and actually very likely to have an, an, an equilibrium um, such as the one that, that we find here. But obviously he showed this um, as a, you know, a lot more generally than, than we do in this very simple example. Okay, so let's, let's think what would happen um, if we start um, and let's pretend for a second that those players can choose sequentially. They, they, they can't in, in reality, they choose simultaneously. But let, let's pretend for a second, just to get the intuition for how we would reach an equilibrium here. Okay? So let's start here at Q0A. So that's the initial contribution of player A. Now, if player A chooses, or suppose player A chose that to contribute that much, the optimal amount for player B would actually be to contribute very little. Yeah. Um, so let's call this Q0B. Is this an equilibrium? The answer is no, because if Q0B is what player B contributes, then, then player A would reconsider, right? Because if, if that's what player B contributes, then player A's reaction function would be, we would be here, and actually player A's optimal response then would be to contribute Q1A. Is that an equilibrium? No, because if player A only contributes Q1A, it's actually optimal for player B to contribute a little more and be somewhere here. So that's Q1B. Is that an equilibrium? No, and we can play this game up until we reach this point where those two best response functions, those two reaction functions, where they cross. At that point, no person has an incentive to deviate because they can't make themselves better off uh, to, uh, by deviating from that equilibrium. Whereas in any other point, you know, if, if we start somewhere up here, we would also end up in, in this equilibrium. Once again, the, the logic here is more that they would do, do all those simulation, or sorry, that, that they would do all those decisions simultaneously and then reach that equilibrium because um, each considers the best response to the actions of the other. Um, but I find those, those, that sequence an, an, an important intermediate step how to think about how that equilibrium would actually be reached. Okay. Um, and now what we should look at is, or what we will look at in, in um, the, the, next, uh, the next video is, to what extent is the contribution to the public good that we see here in this red dot, let's call it point A, to what extent is this actually socially optimal? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, suppose we have a social planner who can choose the, the optimal contribution for everyone in the economy and just force everyone to contribute. What point, like what size of the public good would that person or that social planner choose? And how does that compare to point A here? And what we will see is that they differ a lot. So the, perhaps the surprising thing here is that because of the utility maximization of, of each player and because they enjoy the public good and so on, because they get utility out of it, um, the optimal contribution for each of them is actually not zero in this example. The optimal contribution is for each player to contribute so much that we are in point A. Okay, so, so, so for uh, player for player uh, A, it's let's call this Q A star, and for player B. Let's also call this level QB star. Okay, that's that's how much they would optimally contribute. But 
that optimality is from the perspective of each player. Right? They, they contribute so much or so little because they know that if they contribute more, the other person will contribute less. And so this might not necessarily be optimal. So they might, so both players would actually be better off if they cooperated and both contributed more. And in the next video, we're going to look at what would define the optimal provision of the public good and how that compares to the provision that is done through the contributions that, that constitute point A here.